Now, there is another new development into the investigation into the Trump campaign's ties to the Russian government. Now, this tie, of course, concerns Paul Manafort. Now, in a series of emails turned over to the congressional investigators and special counsel Mueller's team, Manafort had written, offered to give private briefings of the 2016 campaign to a uh, Putin-connected billionaire named Oleg Deripaska. Now, huh, that's a name that keeps popping up. In fact, there's several names of billionaires that keep popping up in relation to Paul Manafort and Donald Trump. Now, the Washington Post writes that Paul Manafort had apparently made the offer in an email to an overseas intermediary asking that a message be sent to Oleg Deripaska, who was an aluminum magnate with whom Paul Manafort had done business in the past. The email reads, this is uh, July 7th, 2016, quote, if he needs private briefings, we can accommodate. Hmm. Now, it's important to note that there is no evidence in the documents showing that Deripaska had received Manafort's offer or that any of these briefings took place. So, like I said, that is important to note. But nonetheless, investigators believe that these exchanges, which reflect Manafort's willingness to profit, from his prominent role alongside of Donald Trump, created a potential open uh, opening for Russian interests at the highest level of a U.S. presidential campaign. Now think about this. I mean, who would want to profit off a relationship to the president? Oh, right. Everybody. <laughs> now, if you're saying that, no, no, of course, nobody would try to profit personally off a position of power uh, related to a president or a presidential campaign, well, you would be lying to yourself <laughs> and everybody else. There's no way you could believe that. Of course, people want to profit personally off power and positions. That's why a lot of people run for these positions. So let me ask you, how did he plan to profit? Well, the Post explains several of these exchanges, which took place between Manafort and a Kiev-based employee of his international political consulting practice, focused on money that Manafort believed he was owed by Eastern European clients. Investigators believe that key passages in these communications refer to Deripaska, who was referenced in some places by initials OVD, according to people familiar with the emails. One email uses the term black caviar and in what investigators believe is a veiled reference to payments Manafort hoped to receive from his former clients. One, in one April exchange, days after Trump named Manafort as a campaign strategist, Manafort referred to his pos positive press and growing reputation and asked, quote, how do we use to get whole? So how do we use to get whole? Basically, he's saying, how can I use my position of power to collect this money that people owe me? Hmm. Now, Manafort spokesman Jason Maloney said in response to this, uh, uh, on Wednesday, that the email exchanges reflected a, quote, innocuous effort to collect past debts. Quote, it's no secret Mr. Manafort was owed money by past clients. Hmm. So, wait, here is his own spokesman saying that, yes, Manafort was discussing how he could leverage his status as a leading campaign strategist on an American political campaign to go after some of the debts he was owed by people in foreign countries. So basically, this is an effort to use his position to enrich himself financially. Now that in itself, I guess not so illegal, right? Although I'm not entirely sure of the legality of the issue. However, the question here is what Manafort might have done to get that money back and whether or not the efforts to get the money back were in themselves illegal. So I think that's what the investigation is really looking into into Manafort. Now, the Post also notes that the email exchanges with Manafort's Kiev-based employee add to an already perilous legal situation for Manafort, whose real estate dealings and overseas bank accounts are of intense interest to Mueller uh, and congressional investigators as part of their examination of the 2016 election. 
People close to Manafort believe that Mueller's goal is to force the former campaign chairman to flip on his former boss and provide information. Which is why, of course, they've been leaning so, so hard on Manafort. Uh, first, they took the step of raiding his home. And they did so in a fashion, by the way, that made sure that he didn't destroy evidence. Uh, when you do a no-knock raid and you pick somebody's lock, as a federal official, you're doing so because you're afraid that if you do knock or you do tell them, hey, we're going to come to your house and we're going to come take this stuff, uh, this these documents related to this case, well, then you're just going to be like, oh, uh, documents? What documents? I don't have any documents. What are you talking about? They're afraid that he was going to destroy evidence. So that means it's very serious. And the fact that he was able to get not one but two warrants uh, on wiretapping and to get this this raid, all that stuff shows that there's a lot of, um, I guess, uh, uh, a lot of maybe not evidence itself, but I'm trying to think of the word here. Um, let's just say that they have a very convincing reason to go after Paul Manafort. So they think that they've got something on him, but we don't know for sure. Okay. And look, they might have even issued an indictment, which again would send a very, very strong signal. So with this, with all that, and, and, and with these emails added in, it's kind of a bad time to be Paul Manafort, okay? Especially since those emails themselves could provide these prosecutors with additional leverage and to get them to try to flip on Trump, on Trump or uh, on anyone else that might have any of these ties. Again, we don't know exactly what the government's case against Manafort is built upon, but according to the Times, investigators seem confident enough to have either given the indictment or flat out threatened Manafort with an indictment. Now, interestingly enough, uh, here's one more thing on this. And this is Trump's uh, lawyer, Ty Cobb. Now, he decided to weigh in on this. Uh, and he talked to Bloomberg's Margaret Telev. And he said, quote, It would be truly shocking if Paul Manafort tried to monetize his relationship with the president. It certainly would have never been tolerated by the president or his team. Oh, oh what's that? Do you hear that? Oh, that's the sound of the bus that Trump's team just threw Paul Manafort under. Hmm. Now, look, we don't know if the president actually knew anything about this or was involved. After all, he's not a very smart person. He's kind of dumb. He's kind of an idiot. So uh, we don't know how much he was involved in this. Uh, but nonetheless, it does have the Trump team scared enough to decide to throw their former campaign manager to the wolves, if not to only save themselves. And that, I think, says a lot. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.